In many rural areas in China, there are ancestral temples. Ancestor worshiping is a unique part of Chinese culture. I even consider it as the religious belief of Chinese. In this video, I'll take you to the place which was the imperial ancestral temple during both the Ming and Qing dynasties. It is right next to the Forbidden City in Beijing. The main hall inside is the only imperial hall that's open to the public. But many ignored it and missed the opportunity to observe the interior of a Chinese imperial hall in person. After watching this video, hopefully you wouldn't skip it when you visit Beijing. In 1420, as the new imperial palace was completed, the emperor of the Ming Dynasty officially announced the shift in the capital city from Nanjing to Beijing. The new capital city was designed according to the Chinese tradition stated in the book Rites of the Zhou Dynasty. In this book that dates back over two millennium ago, there is a paragraph describing the ideal capital city. I drew a picture to translate these sentences. The city has three gates on each side of the wall. In the city, there are nine avenues and nine streets. Then let me turn it around, because when the author talked about the directions, he was facing south. The author said, to the left side of the palace is the ancestral temple, and to the right side, the heart of land and grains. In front of the living space of the imperial palace is the working area. Behind it is the market. The imperial area of Beijing basically follows this layout. The only difference is behind the palace is not a market, but the Jingshan Hill. The ancestral temple is to the southeast side of the palace. On the day of the worshipping rituals, the emperor would walk out of the palace with his crew to the imperial music and enter the ancestral temple from its main entrance. Then he would enter the southern gate of the ancestral temple, the glazed gate. After entering the glazed gate, first thing first, the emperor would go to this hall in this corner to change the dress. Then he would enter the worshiping hall from the second gate, the halberd gate. Now this gate is always locked. Visitors have to enter from the side doors. This is the front hall and was where the worshiping rituals were held. In the center of the square, there is an imperial way. The emperor and his crew would walk on the imperial way from the halberd gate to the main worshiping hall. Rites of the Zhou Dynasty also had rules for the timing of the worshiping rituals. Yi Ci. The rituals were supposed to be held in the first month of each season, which are January, April, July, and October in lunar calendar. At the end of the year, a more grand worshiping ritual would be held. Before important events such as royal wedding, accession, battle, the emperor would also come to the ancestral temple in person to inform the ancestors and ask for their blessing. Same as the halls in Forbidden City, the front hall of the ancestral temple sits on a white marble foundation. There are nine figurines at each of its roof corner demonstrating its high ranking. Only one hall in the entire imperial area is superior to it. That is the Hall of Supreme Harmony, the main hall of the Forbidden City, which has ten figurines at its roof corners.
wedding photos because it has the same design as the Forbidden City. Actually, it was part of the Forbidden City and it is way less crowded. So next time when you come to Beijing, you know where to take photos. The Soha has the same design as the Half Supreme Harmony. What's better, it is open to the public. There are 68 priceless columns in this hall. They are made with a type of wood that has a golden sheen on the sunlight. This type of trees are grown in the mountains in southwest China. Due to the size of the timbers, shipping them to Beijing was a big challenge. These columns are much more precious than the columns in the Hall of Supreme Harmony, which are made of timber of pine trees. How come the main hall of the Forbidden City used cheaper material? It's because it was not the original hall. The hall was burned down and rebuilt many times in history. The current one was built in 1695 during the Qing Dynasty. Not able to find those type of golden timbers with the size they wanted, the constructors had to replace them with timbers of pine trees. In order to have a golden sheen, they wrapped the six columns in the center with golden flakes. The size of the worshipping hall is also bigger than the current hall of Supreme Harmony. When the hall of the Supreme Harmony was rebuilt in the Qing Dynasty, it was shrank. This is the contrast of the original hall and the current hall according to archaeologists. All I want to say is that this worshipping hall in the Ancestral Temple is not just the only hall you can enter inside, but also currently the best one in the Imperial area. I hope I've given you enough reasons to visit it one day yourself. The hall was where the worshipping rituals were held, but the memorial tablets were not stored here. From this angle, this is the front hall and uh, this is the central hall. The central hall is where the ancestral tablets are stored. This is what a memorial tablet looks like. It's used to represent the, the deceased relative during the worshipping rituals. The day before the worshipping ceremony, the tablets would be moved to the front hall and after the ceremony, they would be moved back to the central hall. Both the front hall and the central hall sit on the same white marble foundation. Inside the central hall, there used to be individual cubicles to hold the memorial tablets. And inside each cubicle, there was also a bed, which symbolized RIP, rest in peace. In order to understand the layout of the Imperial Ancestral Temple, we have to refer to rites of the Zhou Dynasty again. It had rules for the ancestor temples of different social class. The emperor, which was on the top of the social class, was allowed to establish seven halls to hold the memorial tablets of his ancestors. Each hall holds the memorial tablet of one deceased emperor. The one in the center was for the founding father of the dynasty. Obviously, this only works well up until the 8th generation when all halls would be full. After the 8th emperor died, the memorial tablet of the 2nd emperor would be moved to a different hall designated for holding the tablets of the remote emperors. Then the tablet of the 8th emperor could fit in, so on and so forth. The tablet of the founding emperor would never be moved. In the Ming Dynasty, the founding emperor made some change to the rules. 
two more emperors would be worshipped, and all nine memorial tablets would be stored in the same hall with individual cubicles. Behind the central hall and behind this wall, there is a third hall. During the Ming Dynasty, this hall was basically the one that housed memorial tablets of the remote ancestors, as stated in rites of the Zhou Dynasty. But in the Qin Dynasty, the system worked a bit differently. No tablets were moved here from the central hall during the entire Qin Dynasty. This is the back hall. It housed the tablets of four generations of ancestors before the establishment of the Qing Dynasty. During the worshiping ceremony, the tablets would also be moved to the front hall and be moved back after the ceremony. In both dynasties, only during the worshiping rituals at the end of the year, those tablets in this hall would be moved to the front hall. During other worshiping rituals, the emperor would send the government officials to this hall to perform the worshiping rituals for him. This was in accord with the rules and rites of the Zhou Dynasty. It was rare in Chinese history for two dynasties to share one imperial ancestor temple. But this place had a smooth transition from the Ming Dynasty to the Qing Dynasty. The memorial tablets of the Ming emperors were moved to a temple in West Beijing that holds the tablets of all Chinese emperors. Then the tablets of the Qing emperors were moved in. That's it. The inscription on this plaque was supposed to be written by Emperor Shunzhi of the Qing Dynasty. The Chinese characters are the Mandarin name of the imperial ancestor temple, Tai Miao. The script next to these two characters are Manchu script. The Qing Dynasty was established by nomadic Manchu people from northeast China. Manchu originally didn't have ancestor worshiping tradition, but when they established the Qing Dynasty, they adopted many Han Chinese tradition. Do you know what this is for? See, there is a hole here. It's part of the drainage system. When it's raining, the rainwater would be discharged from the dragon head, so the palace would be flood free. So next time if it's raining and if you come to the Forbidden City or the Ancestral Temple, you would see thousands of dragon heads feeding out water. They are very similar to the gargoyles in West architectures. The animal is the ninth son of dragon in Chinese mythology, which is good at speed and water. I admit I chose a very cloudy day on purpose, wishing it would be raining and I could film at least the dribbling of water from the dragon heads. What happened was beyond my expectation. It started pouring, and in less than 10 minutes, This is exactly what I intended to show you. The water was running down the white marble foundation. The ground is actually slightly tilted down towards the south, although you wouldn't feel it. This way, rainwater would flow southward and be discharged quickly through the ditches. It is very rare to be raining like this in Beijing, but thanks to the drainage system, the palace and the ancestral temple are flood-free even during extreme weather. The side halls were used to store the memorial tablets of non-emperors. The east side hall stored the memorial tablets of royal members who rendered outstanding service, and the west side hall stored the memorial tablets of non-royal members who rendered outstanding service. Each side hall has 15 rooms. It was a top honor for those 30 persons. They would be worshipped by the emperor in person each year. 
In history, there was someone who didn't want his memorial tablet to be held in the ancestor temple. That's Emperor Dao Guang of the Qing Dynasty. In 1850, a few days before his death, he made a will asking his crown prince not to put his memorial tablet in the ancestor temple after his death. The Qing Imperial Court lost the Opium War ten years earlier and was forced to sign the Nanjing Treaty, in which the Hong Kong Island was ceded to Britain. Cession of the Hong Kong Island made Emperor Dao Guang shameful. He felt he didn't qualify to stay together with the previous emperors and to be worshipped by the offspring. But his son didn't comply with his will in this matter. No son would do that. Only the other way around. In the Ming Dynasty, Wan Song spent 24 years to get the memorial tablet of his father into the Imperial Ancestor Temple. That was Emperor Jia Jing, who was not a prince before assuming the role of emperor. He was chosen from the royal clan as the emperor because the previous emperor didn't have a successor. In order to achieve his goal, he once even changed the layout of the ancestor temple to that in rights of the Zhou Dynasty. Eight more units were built in this complex, each holding one memorial tablet. But this layout only lasted for six years before a big fire caused by lightning burned eight of the nine units down. Emperor Jia Jing ordered to rebuild the ancestor temple, and the layout was changed back. During this process, his father successfully gained a position in the new ancestor temple. The current imperial ancestor temple is the one rebuilt in 1546. Throughout the entire imperial dynasties that lasted for over 3,000 years, the Chinese society followed a set of rules and rituals. Even the nomadic conquerors adopted them. They ensure the social order and the continuation of our civilization, but the downside was also prominent. The rules and the rituals were overcomplicated. Sometimes they waste time and energy as well as social resource. It became even dangerous when the rules were leveraged in the power struggles in the imperial court. Today, some of them have become part of our culture and tradition, but more have been abandoned. Some last words on the Imperial Ancestor Temple. Today, it's called Workers' Cultural Palace, and its main entrance is on the Chang'an Avenue, facing the Tiananmen Square. After a visit, you can exit from the back to continue visiting the Forbidden City. I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sites of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.